Hi, and welcome to this 4NAV coffee break. My name is René Brummel. I'm a product specialist at 4NAV, and I will be your presenter today. As this coffee break is live, you can ask your questions via the GoToWebinar question window. We will answer them at the end of the coffee break. Today, we're going to add lot and serial numbers to your Business Central reports, the easy way. We have discussed adding lot and invoices, lot numbers on invoices before. The hard part on lot and serial numbers, however, is that they're stored in two separate tables, reservation entries for unposted documents and item ledger entries for posted documents. And what makes it worse, uh, from uh, all of the sales documents, you need a slightly different table relation in order to get those uh, lot and serial numbers. Today, we'll be getting lot and serial numbers on, on both unposted and posted entries. We will demonstrate this with the order confirmation report since that may contain both. To demonstrate adding lot and serial numbers, I'm going to use these steps. Prerequisites, what do I need to get going? In step two, I will set up the data item for the reservation entries. In step three, I will set up the data items for the item ledger entries. And in step four, I will dis display them both seamlessly in the report. Let's start with the first step. Today, I will be adding lot and serial numbers in the Business Central Cloud Tenant with the Business Central 2022 Wave 1 release. I have installed the 4NAV customizable report pack and have executed the step-by-step -step visit from the assisted setup to get started. Of course, everything I do today is also available on the Business Central on-premise environment. I also have the 4NAV designer installed on my PC. The 4NAV designer can be downloaded from the 4NAV website. To add lot and serial numbers, the first thing we need to do is get the related records from the reservation entry table. As I said, unposted item tracking entries are stored in the reservation entry table. So the first thing we are going to do is switch over to Business Central and explore the data set because we need to know uh, which tables to get and what the table relation is going to be. So for the purpose of this coffee break, I've created a new partly posted sales order. And in this sales order, I've got some items with serial numbers and lot numbers. And if we look at the quantities to ship, you will notice that some of these need, still need to be shipped, so they're unposted. And some of them are already shipped, so they are posted. Now, these three lines have item tracking lines. So the first line has two posted uh, lot numbers. And the second line... has two unposted serial numbers and the third line has a single lot number uh, of which one is posted and one is uh, still unposted. So uh, as I said we want to get the unposted entries. They are in the, in the reservation entry table so uh, let's go and have a look inside the reservation entry table. because that will tell us how to create our table relation. To view a table, I can simply add the table number to my URL and that will open the, uh, the table in my web client. You will notice right here, I don't have too many reservation entries, so that makes things easy. And you may notice right here, the source ID uh, 101022. I'm going to filter on this quickly. Uh, because that's the order number that I am working from. And you will notice in here, I've got the item numbers. And if I scroll along, I've got serial numbers. Uh, as I said, I've got two unposted entries with serial numbers. And I've got one unposted entry with a lot number. So the lot number is right there. So the information I need is right here. And the table rela relation I'm going to need is I've got a source ID, which is the order number. So I need that. I've got a source ref number, which is the order line number. Uh, so those two are needed in order to get this particular entry. Uh, but we may have other entries in here with the same source ID and source ref number because they may not be unique uh, inside Business Central. So I need to filter additionally on source type 37, which is the uh, sales line table, and the source subtype 1, which is the order. So now I know this. 
I can open my sales order in the Fornap Designer. So I'll find my sales order. And you will notice I will be editing this stuff on the uh, on the individual documents and not the templates. And that is because the table relations uh, between these tables are different for, for the sales invoice, for the posted sales shipment, for the sales quote, for the sales order, etc. So I need to do this at the individual document level. So I open the uh, VAT order confirmation and I'm going to add a data item and I'm going to add that to the line. So we'll drop it right on top of the line. And my data item is going to be table 337, which is the reservation entry. And if ever you need to know a table number, by the way, you can use this uh, table selection tool that will give you the number and the name. So you can search by name or number. So I'll grab the reservation entry, then I'm going to set the data item link. So as I said, we need the source ID matches our document number. We have the source ref number and that matches the document line number. Hit OK and OK and that will create the reservation entry data item. And now of course we still need to add the filter for the data item because we need to filter on the source type. So I'll grab my source type and that's going to be 37. And I need to filter on the source subtype and that is going to be 1. That's exactly what we saw in the reservation entry table in Business Central. So I'm going to hit OK. Then I can insert a body section and I will call that reservation body. And on the reservation body, I'm going to add some lines from the reservation, some information from the reservation entry, which has been added to my field list. I'm going to grab the serial number. I'm going to get the lot number and I'm going to get the quantity drag them into my report and give them an exciting color and that should get my unposted uh, item tracking entries from business central the test i can preview now preview with the uh, 101022 invoice that we looked at earlier and you will notice that I've got the three item lines here and for the second line the serial number item I've got my two serial numbers right here uh, and for my lot number I've got the one lot number uh, that is still unposted so that's how you get the unposted entries from uh, from Business Central And now we have added the reservation entries, we can add the item ledger entries in the same way. As I said, item ledger entries are used to store posted tracking entries. This setup is a bit trickier since we now need to get the posted, posted sales shipment lines first. And to see how that works, we'll go back to Business Central. Like I said, these entries are stored in the item track item. Uh, ledger entries so I will open the item ledger entries in the same way that's table 32 which I know because I've prepped this coffee break so the item ledger entries table is a bit bigger so I will sort it top down you will notice that the last entry is the 1002 one of the items in my order so let's filter on that one and you will notice a few entries there uh, you've got some positive adjustments, which is me posting up some uh, lot numbers uh, to get lot numbers uh, in the database. And I've got three entries for the 1002. And the source number is 40,000, that's the customer, and the document number is 102223. And you will notice that's not the order number, uh, because the item ledger entries are related to the, uh, to the posted sales shipment. So these are in the posted sales shipments. Uh, I've got for the posted sales shipments, I've got a document number and I have somewhere out here a document line number and I've got a document type. And those three are enough to set my table relation. And all the way in the back here, uh, you will find 
the lot numbers that we were talking about. So these are the entries I need to get, and I need to get these entries, as I said, through the posted sales shipments. So let's look at the posted sales shipments. And if I look at the last posted sales shipment, you will notice that right here I posted uh, one for item 1002. So from here I need, to, I need to get this line from my order line, and from here I can get my item ledger entry. And how to get this line from the order line, well that's fairly easy. If I look at the page inspection and filter on order, you will notice that these uh, sales, posted sales shipment lines have a link to the order number and to the order line number. So I can get my posted sales shipment line uh, from the order and I can get my item ledger entry from the posted sales shipment. Let's go to 4 and and see how that looks in practice. I will add a data, data item once again and this data item is going to be the sales shipment line which is table 111 And in here, I'm going to set a relation to the order number. And the order number is going to be the document number on the order line. And I've got the order line number, and that's going to be related to my line number. So that gets my posted sales shipment line. And then from the posted sales shipment line, I need to add another table data item. I will drop that on the sales shipment line. And that is going to be table 32, item ledger entry. And the table relation there, as we discovered earlier, is going to be document number, is going to be the document number from the sales shipment line field. And the document line number is going to be the line number from the posted sales shipment line fields. Hit OK on that one, that gets me the item ledger entry. And then on the item ledger entry, as we saw earlier, we need to filter once again by document type. So filter by document type, and that is an option field. So I can filter on the sales shipment and then this specific filter is uh, as we discussed earlier because item ledger entries can have entries from multiple source tables and these multiple source tables can have the same numbers those numbers are not enforced unique in business central so we need this document type constant filter in order to make sure that we are getting the actual sales shipment lines uh, sorry the actual item ledger entries from the sales shipment lines Hit OK, and then it's just a matter of inserting a body once again, finding the item ledger entry and putting the same thing we did before. Serial number, lot number, and quantity. Drag them in, make these yellow. And preview again. Once again, preview with the 101022 order. And now we have the uh, yellow lines as well, which are the posted item, posted item tracking entries. And we've got two lot numbers for the first sales line, and we've got one lot number for the, uh, for the last sales line. So now I've got my item tracking entries from post, for both posted and unposted lines. which means we can move over to the final part of our webinar, which is to display these both in the report. Uh, we'll use the current report join strings to display the item tracking information in line with the description. So back to Fornav. And in Fornav, I'm going to delete some stuff from the tables I've added. And do some quick alignments right here. 
I'm happy with the quantity. I'll just leave that where it is. You may have noticed that the quantity is minus one. If you want to set that to one, obviously simply uh, invert that one. And to display this stuff, I'm going to use .join strings, which will join the strings we have together. And I'm going to join them with a backslash n, and the backslash n is JavaScript for new line. And in, on those new lines, I'm going to add the, on the first one, the reservation entry dot field extensions dot serial number. And the field extensions will display the, the field plus the caption if the field has a value. So what I'm doing right here, field extensions dot lot number, is I will display the lot number and the serial number. Um, if they are there and if they're not there, it will display either the lot number or the serial number. I will copy this because I need the same on my item ledger entries. And delete the original line. So that will display the lot numbers and serial numbers with the field captions. Once again, preview. There we have them. Of course, the lines are now yellow and, uh, and green, and that's to make them stand out a bit so we can easily spot what's going on. Uh, but now we have the lot numbers and the serial numbers displayed in line with the uh, uh, in, in our order. So this is how you would add this for your sales orders. A lot of customers also want to add this uh, lot number information on the uh, on the picking list. The picking list works in pretty much the same way because it is built on top of the uh, sales header table just as we have the, uh, the sales orders. So if you want to do this in a picking list, on a picking list I typically only, only use the reservation entry because I'm not interested in the uh, in the lines that are already posted. I'm interested in the lines that I still need to pick. So I've got the reservation entry and the reservation entry has the same uh, data item link that we saw before in the sales order. Again, you can do this from the posted sales invoices as well, but you need to, uh, you need to set the table relation again to the sales shipment because you need to get the item ledger entries from the sales shipment or the value entries. You can do this from the uh, posted sales shipment lines as well. Uh, obviously, from the posted sales shipment lines, all you need to get is the item ledger entries. So, let's recap what we just did. The first thing we did was to add a reservation entry data item to get the unposted item tracking entries. Once we had that, we could get the posted tracking entries from the item ledger entry table. From these posted entries, we had to use the sales shipment line table as an intermediate. Finally, we used the curryport.joinString function to clean up the layout and display all the entries in line with the item description. Thank you for listening to me so far. I see we don't have any questions in the question box, so I will continue with wrapping up this coffee break. If you want to know more about Fornaf or if you want to download the Fornaf Designer and Converter, please visit our website. If you want to install Fornaf in Business Central Cloud, please visit the Microsoft App Source. You can watch more videos about Fornaf on our YouTube channel. If you have any questions about Fornaf, please email them to support at fornaf.com. For a full list of upcoming and recorded coffee breaks, please visit fornaf.com slash coffee break. Thank you very much for listening and goodbye.